previously on When the Music Stops. It's not the real world, it's just a fantasy, but don't the fantasy bubbles pop, leaving looking for the one someday, then one someday. The smell seems especially bad today as I pass the elephants. I don't usually notice the smell unless they've just taken a big dump. Sometimes not even then. But I'm getting tired of being cooped up on the fifth floor of Madison Square Garden. All the performers are. Why do they call it that anyway? It's not on Madison Avenue. It isn't square and it's certainly no garden, especially when the circus inhabits it. Happy birthday, Nikki. Th <clears throat> Thanks. Maybe I have a present for you later? Hi, Magda. Magda? Hello, Alexis. Hey, did you happen to catch me on the morning show? No, sorry. Missed it. Oh, well, I, I have it on DVD if you guys want to see it. You can come to my room in some time and watch it, Magda. Thanks. Oh, and Nick, yeah, you're invited too, of course. Of course. Hey, I've got to go, Lena. See you later? Yes, for sure, Nikki. You know where. Uh-huh. I passed the New York Rangers dressing room. You're on time for a change. I'll try not to make a habit of it. Are you enjoying your birthday so far? Maybe I have a present for you later? It looks promising. Hey, did I leave my boots in here? They're not in my dressing room. My father enters, holding a pair of white leather show boots. Your boots! Thanks. Where did you find them? Bulgarian dressing room. Kovacevi you find near Clown Ellie. Oh, I must have left them there when I was talking to Trevor. You know, the usher clown I jam with. I know who Trevor is. Right. So, what were you doing in the Bulgarian dressing room? Big poker game? How much you win this time? I win thousand bucks. Christoph. Oh, yeah, Dad. Almost forgot. Ben Krauss wants to see you. Coming, Mr. Ben! So, what's Krauss want to talk to Dad about? Probably about his side business. Come on, Mom. Like the owner of one of the biggest shows in the world has time to worry about Dad selling vodka and beer to circus people. If he's going to worry about that, why doesn't he get on Alexis Dimitri for loan sharking and drug dealing? Tamer of Wild Beasts, Terry Allen reigns as King of the Majestic Lions of Africa. Well, I hate to cut this short, sweetie, but I should be going. I'm leaving. I love you. Yeah, yeah. Don't be late. Yes, Mom. Mwah. Mom? What, Nick? You're going to make me late. I love you, too. Mwah. By the time I leave the dressing room, the line act is half over. <laughs> Happy birthday, Nikki! Her rope falls open, leaving me breathless. Exciting aerial artistry about Ring Walk, the Messina duo. The clowns will be back soon. <laughs> Why you think I find secret place behind boxes? to give you presents. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Thanks. That was uh, extremely frustrating. <laughs> you must go now? Not yet. The cage is still in the ring. Anyway, Stashik is there. It's fine. You sure? Yeah. Just kiss me one more time. Lena. Hmm? Where's the music? They should be in the middle of their act. Where the hell's the music? And then... But, the only sound in the circus worse than silence is emergency clown music. 
Oh, God. It's not the real world. And now stay tuned for episode two of When the Music Stops, Dad's Rock. Dipping up my coveralls, I tear down the hall toward ring one. The hall suddenly seems miles long. Up ahead, the elephants start to line up. Isaac, one of the handlers, spots me and commands the elephants back with his bullhook. Back! Back! I fly past them, slipping on some hay. Catching my balance, I bolt through the ring one alcove into the arena. I jump over the track lights, barely in each other, knocking the flashlight out of his hand. It sails up the back track. Nick! Someone grabs my arm, pulling me out of the spotlight. They haven't turned on the house lights yet. Maybe that's a good sign. Nick! There's been an accident. I look up at my parents' empty cradle, then down into ring one at the huddle of workmen in the darkness. I spot Sarah Jameson on her handheld radio. Soon after, the paramedics arrive. Krauss is still gripping my arm as we move toward the ring. My legs wobbling, my chest tight. As the crowd of workmen disperses, my knees buckle. I blink the heap of red spandex on the floor. My parents, lying injured or dead, on top of each other. Then, Dad's head moves. Oh, thank God. I focus on him, cradling Mom's motionless body. Move, Mom, please. He looks up. Please, tell me she's okay. Pulls her closer and starts to weep. It's the first time I've seen my father cry. Two workmen try to pry him away from her. They can't. I stand inside the ring in shock, watching the paramedics try to work around him. I can't move. I can't feel my legs. I can't feel anything. Except for Krause's grip on my arm. service for mom in the circus arena several days later. Monday, our day off. Father Jim delivers the sermon. It's simple, the way mom would have liked it. I never realized how many people the circus employs. Even Mr. Freeman makes an appearance. Someone touches my shoulder. I turn. It's Magdalena offering me a plate of food. Empanadas. Your favorite, Nikki. Mrs. Sanchez made them. She remembered how much you loved them. Mrs. Sanchez is the matriarch of the Flag Peas Act. Mom really liked her. I consider taking one, just to be polite. Thanks. Uh, I'm not hungry. Nikki, you have to eat. When you eat last? I don't know. Have you seen my dad? Her answer becomes background noise, much like everything else lately. I need air. It takes me 40 minutes to navigate from the arena to the elevator through the throng of people offering condolences. Other acts, clowns, showgirls, workmen, concession people, even the building security. It should give me comfort that mom touched so many lives. It doesn't. At least, not yet. Maybe someday. I search for Dad in the bar next door. Then, a few places down in Penn Station. No luck. Finally, I catch the number seven back to the circus train. 
figuring he must have slipped away and gone home. Minutes later, I'm banging on the door of Dad's suite in car 95. The quarter train he and Mom shared. Shit. Dad? The lights are out. Curtain closed over the only window in the room. I stumble over an empty bottle of vodka. Spot another half-empty bottle on the expandable table. The kitchen area is immaculate. Probably the way Mom left it. I wonder if Dad's even eaten since she's been gone. Dad! When he still doesn't answer, I wander toward the back room, spotting the black trousers and maroon shirt he had on earlier, strewn on top of the stackable washer dryer. The shower is dripping, and the toilet stinks, making an air-sucking noise. The foot pedal is stuck again, in the down position. I hold my breath, stepping on the pedal a couple times until it releases. I stare at the pocket door leading into the bedroom, a four foot high queen bed and space for storage underneath. The door is cracked open, dad's shoes stuck in the doorway, one of them upside down as if he kicked them off before climbing up into bed. I slide the door open. Dad is curled up in the fetal position against the wall. I kick his shoes under the bed and close the door, but make my way to the couch. I'd always thought my father was the strongest person I know, but maybe I was wrong. My observation for the day, Mom? You were Dad's rock. I don't know what's going to happen to him now. To us. All he's done for the past few days is drink and sleep. He won't even talk to me. I don't know what to do. I feel like I lost both of you. I can't stop crying. Days later, I'm in my double stateroom on 87 car, where I've spent most of the past few days. I lie on my bed that converts into a sofa and a table, though I rarely convert it. I stare absently at the television. I lost track of what's on, and what day it is. It's open. I already know by the way the whole train shook, and by the fact that we haven't been to work all week, who it is. Ben Krauss. I turn off the television, but don't bother to get up. Where is your father, Nick? Did you check his room? Eight cars down on the other side of your vestibule? Normally, I'd show more respect for the 300-pound German. But over the past few days, I've developed a cynical edge. His van is parked outside, but he's not answering his door. Finally, I stand knowing full well why the German is here. Mr. Freeman wants to know when, if, we're coming back to work. Your mom was very special. I swap the air, as if to say, just get on with the real reason you're here. He stares at me, as if he's shocked by my behavior. I return his stare, shocked that he's shocked. Screw him. I almost verbalize my disdain, but something stops me. And it's not his size, it's mom's voice. Respect your elders, Nick. He's just doing his job. I feel like crying or hitting him, but I don't do either. Mr. Freeman wants to meet with you at the building tomorrow to discuss things. What things does he want to discuss? Is Freeman planning to fire us? Cut our pay if we don't produce an aerial act? We'll be there. Or I will, anyway. Dad might be drinking himself into a stupor again. 
Krauss starts to leave. I'm right behind him. He turns suddenly. I nearly crash into him. How are you holding up, Nick? Maybe you should have led with that. I'm fine. I don't think your father is doing too good. He'll be fine. Alive. Ariel wants to know if you need anything. Ariel is Krauss's wife. Tell her thank you, but I'm okay. Nick? Yeah? Take care of your father. He is in a bad place. I... I don't know what I would do if something happened to Ariel. It's the first time I've ever seen the side of Krauss. Yeah, I'll go check on him. And don't worry, you'll have your wheel and cannon act. Even if I perform them by myself. The aerial act is another story. I wait for Krauss to bring it up. If he does, I might lose it. He nods. Then, in an awkward silence, his eyes dart around the room. Shower, sink, hot plate. When he runs out of things to look at, his eyes fall on mine. I'm sorry, son. He lifts his arm. I wonder if he's going to try and hug me. If I'll let him. That's when I noticed the container in his large mitt. Ariel made this for you. She thought you could use a hot meal. Thank you. Take care, son. I blink in place of speaking. I don't even realize I'm holding my breath until he's gone. <sighs> I feel like I've been underwater for several minutes. I flop back on my bed, collecting myself and my thoughts, then set off to find Dad. Listen to your feet The rhythm on gravel Listen to the beat This man is here, so he must be. Expecting to find him passed out on his bed, I'm slightly startled when I see him sitting at the table. He fills his glass with a bottle of vodka. He's drunk again. Or still drunk. But at least he's conscious. For the moment. Krauss just came to see me. We have a meeting with Mr. Freeman tomorrow. They bought jacks! I don't disagree. But that's beside the point. Dad. I told him he'll have his wheel and cannon act by the beginning of next week. What give you authority to make decision? The fact that I'm the only one who stays sober long enough to do so? <laughs> he takes a swig, then pushes off the table and stands, closing the distance between us. It's the first time he's hit me in... ever. He sits back down, pounding more vodka. I grab a glass from the cupboard above the stove. He cocks his head as I sit down across from him, planting my glass on the table. You're too young to drink. I've grown up a lot in the past few days. He looks away, downing his drink. What do you want to do, Tatoosh? We have to make a decision. If we don't work, they'll fire us. We have contract. Yeah, to work. We're not working. They have a right. She ho! I don't care what they want. My wife is dead. Your mother. How can you sit here and talk to me about business and their rights? This conversation is over. Go. He reaches for the bottle. I snatch it off the table, hurling it at the door. I miss her too, Dad. I can barely sleep, and when I do, I wake up thinking... What? I should have been there. I could have saved her. I don't understand how... No. It was not your fault, Nick. It was mine. Cinch was bad. I don't know why I don't fall too. I wish I fall too. I feel like you did. It feels like... 
I choked back the rest of my sentence, staring at the spatter of vodka running down the door into the mess of alcohol and broken glass on the floor. Mom would be upset with me for making such a mess. I wipe away a tear and start to clean it up. Dad doesn't say anything. He just sits there like a stone. A drunken man. I hate him. And I miss him. The way he used to be. Fine. Drink yourself to death. I'm sure it's what you would have wanted. I don't realize I've cut my hand until I notice blood dripping into the puddle of vodka. I keep picking up the glass as my hand saturates with blood, my cheeks with tears. Dad grabs my arm, pulling me up over to the sink. I wipe my face with my sleeve as he runs cold water over my wound. Dad. She won the psychologist. What? Your mother. Before she joined circus, I met her in club in Connecticut. She was out with her college friends. I feel a sting as Dad pours peroxide on my cut. I fall in love with her instantly. I never think someone so beautiful could love me back. He pulls out the first aid kit my mom had stashed under the sink, rummaging around for a band-aid to cover up the cut on my hand. It looks a lot smaller now that it's stopped bleeding. She show up in next town. They have audition for showgirl. She was a good dancer. Beautiful. He sweeps up the rest of the glass. Dad, what do you want to do? He wobbles slightly as he moves back over to the table. I'd almost forgotten he was drunk. I don't know, Nick. But we'd be okay. One way or another, we'd be okay. I make Dad some coffee, and we stay up most of the night, talking about Mom. Laughing. Crying. We don't talk about Krauss, and Freeman, or what our future holds. But for a little while, I don't have to care. I'm just glad to have my dad back. Tonight's episode featured music by Mallory Moyer and Bill Vintage, with theme song The Music Stops, performed by FM2. Starring the voices of Luke Conkey, Michael Vina, Rebecca Roberts, and Megan Stroke. Next on When the Music Stops. Did you talk to Mr. Freeman yet? Not yet, but I already hear rumors about the new aerial act. Who? The Mandels. They're a top dollar act. Yeah. You know what that mean? They're coming with more than one act. Yeah. So, we're done? You really think Mr. Freeman will screw us like that? I hope not. I don't work for elephant pay. What? Peanuts. What if Mr. Freeman keeps us but won't renegotiate our pay? Then we tell him what he can do with contract. We go back to Venice and open landscaping business. <laughs> Not so funny. Oh, you're serious? We'd be okay. Yeah, Dad. I know. I just... No, sir. I know. Listen. Magdalena offers solution to our problem. Uh, excuse me. Nikki! Not now, Magdalena. Why are you mad? I tried to help. I'm not mad. I just need some time to get used to the idea, okay? It'd make you so unhappy. No, it, it doesn't. Really, I'm grateful. I, I just need some time. You take all the time you need, but at least... What? At least you be here. Yeah. This pain. This 
Someday.